independent. While in order to be coherent, we will further strengthen our sanctions package against the Belarus regime and all those who cooperate with the Russian military aggressions against Ukraine. As I said yesterday, we adopted an unprecedented support package on the European Peace Facility to help Ukrainian armed forces to defend Ukraine's territorial integrity. And this was done in a record time. I started working on this proposal after the European Union Council. Immediately after the European Union Council, I started thinking that uh, enough was not enough, that we could do more. And after the Foreign Affairs Ministers, when we decided finally to put Putin on the list and Lavrov on the list of sanctioned people, but we were not able to decide on the financial measures related to take SWIFT, Russia out of SWIFT, we start thinking that we should be doing more. And immediately we start uh, preparing this decision which in one hand mobilized resources to help military to Ukraine, which is, as I said yesterday, a turning point on the history of European integration. Because until now, it was considered that the European Union, which is a peace union, not a military union, was not allowed to supply arms to a third country. That's what we are doing now. This is another taboo that falls. And secondly, and tomorrow the Parliament we will discuss about it, that the Ministers has been informed about the decision that will put a strong, a strong toll on the Russian economy, because to cut half of the reserves of the Russian Central Bank is going to be very damaging. But today the Defence Ministers work a lot on the coordination of the efforts in order to make uh, effective all bilateral initiative together with our funding. And we have created a clearing house to keep track of the Ukrainian request in one side and their uh, needs and our F offers, member states offers, in order to ensure maximum effectiveness and coordination of our support. And in doing so, this cell, this uh, clearinghouse cell, will be working in coordination with NATO. Ukraine has been asking also support for geospatial intelligence. And we are mobilizing our satellite center, which is placed in Madrid, to work on that. So I think that from the mobilization of resources, everything is on track. It has to be done quickly because the war continues. The war cannot wait for bureaucratic procedures. And I think that our answer and our overcoming of the institutional difficulties has been quick and showing a new era in our relations with Russia. And one of the things that the European Union has to do is to decrease as quick as possible its dependency on oil and Russia, Russian oil and gas. We pay a very high bill to Putin, and this money is being used to finance its military aggression. I want also to differentiate between Putin and Putin regime and the Russian people. We are sure that the Russian people don't want this war. It is a war started by Putin and by Putin regime with a clique of oligarchs who are supporting him. And we are strongly convinced that one of the best ways of fighting is to fight against the black money issue from corruption that supports the people who support Putin. And on the measures taken yesterday and approved by legislative procedures by the Commission at the proposal of the Commission and the High Representative, an important package of these measures are addressed to fight the money that these people, these oligarchs, have on the, in our banks and our financial systems. 
And I am very happy to know that Switzerland has joined us on the implementation of this package. Because without the participation of Switzerland, our measures would have been not as much effective as needed. But that's a very good news that Switzerland joins the efforts of the European Union to fight financially and to fight against corruption and to fight against the dark money, the black money of the oligarchs who are supporting Putin that are being targeted by our sanctions. And they will continue being targeted by our sanctions. We'll talk later more about how to fight against corruption because corruption is part also of the challenges we have to face. We are also worried about the situation in other countries of the neighborhood, mainly Moldova and Georgia. And uh, I am heading for Chisnau on Wednesday to meet with the Moldovan authorities and meet with Ukrainian people who have been forced by Putin aggression to leave their homes and look for help for shelter, the need of assistance in Moldova. But Moldova is mainly one of the countries in which we believe that the Russian pressure can be increasing on the coming days. Also, in the Western Balkans, as I announced on Friday, I decided to mobilize the reserve of the Althea operation. And up to now, 500 men and women will reinforce this force on the ground. And I thank the countries who will be providing this reinforcement of our capacity to control the situation in, uh, through the operation of Althea. I think it's a prudent and proportionate sign of our determination to maintain the stability at Bosnia Herzegovina and face possible destabilization activities by Russia in the Balkans. All that shows that we have been able to react quickly and in unity. All that shows the importance of advancing towards the adoption of this strategic compass that Guane presented was a way to stress that Europe needs to awake from the security and defense dimension, that our efforts on security and defense has to be more evident. From this point of view, I welcome the decision by Germany to take important steps on increasing their defense capacities. But the increase on defense capabilities of the member states of the European Union has to be done in a coordinated manner, because altogether our defense expenditure is four times, four times the defense expenditure of Russia and equal to the one of China. But certainly we cannot say that it's equally efficient. So we have to spend more, but overall we need to spend better. And Europe is the framework in which this increase on the efficiency of our military expenditure has to take place. We have no other choice but to stand together as European Union in support of Ukraine, keeping in mind that it's not just supporting the Ukrainian people, it's also supporting our security and also the stability of the world. This is going to have a price. This is not a free lunch. Sanctions will backlash. Sanctions have a cost. And it's better to express and to explain to our public opinion that this is the truth. But we have to be ready to pay this price now, because if not, we will have to pay a much bigger price in the future. I think it's important to face that with determination and realism. We are turning a page on the history of the European integration and also on the history of Europe in the post-World War and in the post-Cold War. The relations with Russia will no more be determined by trade, believing that trade will make a, a political transformation of the regime. We want to support the Russian people, I am just recording a message, another message to the Russian people 
We don't want to fight with them. We want just to defend Ukraine first and a way of living after in front of the Russian aggression. Well, I am wrong saying the Russian aggression. It's better to say from the Putin aggression and the Putin regime aggression, which is antithetic with ours. Values, and that's why we are standing behind the people of Ukraine. Thank you, High Representative. And now I will take questions, and I have quite a lot uh, in the room and um, remotely. I will start by Yuri. Not many questions because it's four o'clock. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Nabila. Hi, Representative. I have questions, of course, on uh, the uh, support to armed forces of Ukraine. Can you tell us a little bit more what was uh, discussed today of what will be delivered to Ukraine? And, for example, will there be missile defenses? Because we see that Russia is using missiles to attack also Ukrainian cities and civilians. And uh, the second question, uh, can you tell us also, was it discussed how to deliver this aid to Ukraine? We know that uh, there is a land border, of course, with EU member states, but as Russia has these uh, missile uh, missiles, uh, like Iskander missiles in Belarus and is using it. So how to protect this uh, delivery of this little aid to Ukraine so that Ukraine can use it. Thank you very much. Um, mire, I'm going to speak in Spanish because it's more natural for we me to answer this question in our Spanish. Interpreters you know? Here. I didn't understand it. Uh, you need to... Do you know what does it mean? Mire, estamos en una guerra y no voy a dar ninguna información que pueda servir a la parte a la que nos enfrentamos. Comprenderá que no la voy a contar a usted con pelos y señales por dónde y cómo va a pasar la ayuda que vamos a proporcionar a Ucrania. Estoy seguro que Rusia estaría muy contenta de saberlo. Hoy las autoridades rusas han dicho que considerarán que la ayuda que la Unión Europea va a dar a Ucrania constituye un acto inamistoso y que atacarán a cualquier persona o cualquier entidad que transporte esta ayuda hacia Ucrania. Por lo tanto, vamos a permitir que no le dé ningún detalle que pueda serles de utilidad. Si le puedo decir que naturalmente pasará por aquellos países que tienen una frontera con Ucrania. Pero eso supongo que no es desvelar ningún secreto. Y en cuanto a la clase de material, ya le dije ayer, y repito, que se trata de material defensivo, armas y municiones, armas y municiones de todos los calibres que les permitan defenderse de la agresión. Ok, merci. Uh, now I go to the colleagues uh, remotely, and Thomas has raised the first uh, hand. Oui, merci. C'est Thomas Millerina de la télévision suisse. Je peux vous demander de, de commenter en français la décision du Conseil fédéral de s'aligner sur les sanctions de l'Union européenne. Et deuxième question, euh, plus ou moins au même temps, le ministre russe Lavrov a décidé de annuler une, la, la visite de demain à Genève. Il a cité, euh, je regarde les tweets de la mission russe à Genève, euh, le, le banc. Euh, donc les sanctions, euh, la, la fermeture de l'espace aérien de l'Union européenne. Mais est-ce que les restrictions s'appliquent aussi au, au vol diplomatique Merci. Uh, my French is not uh, excellent, but uh, I will try to say in French. C'est un français euh, impeccable, Monsieur le Président. Non, non, non. Écoutez, euh, d'après ce que je sais, le gouvernement le gouvernement suisse a décidé de s'aligner complètement avec les sanctions européennes. Il va faire exactement la même chose que nous. C'est très bien. C'est parfait. C'est une mauvaise nouvelle pour la Russie. Mais du point de vue de l'unité 
du monde, disons, occidental et du point de vue de la de l'applicabilité, la, de l'efficacité de ces sanctions financières. Par exemple, tous les actifs qui soient déposés dans la banque centrale suisse, je ne sais pas s'il y en a ou pas ou combien, ils seront gelés. Et ça ne servira de rien aux oligarques de transférer ces actifs en Suisse. Parce que la Suisse va faire exactement la même chose que nous. C'est une très très bonne nouvelle. Et la deuxième question C'était sur... Euh... Ah, non, euh, non, non, non. Euh, L'ascension permet parfaitement M. Lavrov de voyager à Genève. Euh... Il y a des exceptions diplomatiques. Euh, on n'a pas pris la mesure d'interdire... Euh, à M. Lavrov de voyager à Genève pour des raisons diplomatiques. Si c'est pour des vacances, non. Is this Naomi? Yes, please, you have the floor. Hi, thanks very much. And Naomi O'Leary, Irish Times. I have two quick questions, if I could, High Representative. The first one is about cyber attacks. Can you confirm any cyber attacks of... Uh, Russian origin. For example, we've had a major attack on Toyota, as one example. Um, the second question is about hidden assets. Um, in every harbour of the Mediterranean, there are mega yachts proudly flying the flags of tax havens, where their ownership is concealed by shell companies, and many of their owners are Russian oligarchs whose names are very well known. Um, will, how will we identify the ownership of those? Will they be affected? Will they be seized? And what about cryptocurrencies? Are there any steps taken, um, given the design of crypto, to be peer-to-peer -peer and to evade regulation? Thank you. Um, no tengo conciencia o información de ese ataque concreto al que usted se refiere contra una empresa en particular, pero ha habido ataques cibernéticos contra varios ministerios en Ucrania, contra varios medios de comunicación en Ucrania. Naturalmente que Rusia lanza ataques cibernéticos, no tengo constancia de esta última, pero Ucrania nos ha pedido ayuda para defenderse de los ataques cibernéticos que sufre y sufrirá, me temo, y naturalmente forzó formará parte de nuestra ayuda. El, los activos ocultos de las personas que son objetos de las sanciones que hemos aprobado estos días tendrán que ser localizados y una vez localizados tendrá que actuarse contra ellos. Yo no me voy a pasear por todos los puertos de Europa buscando los yates de los oligarcas, pero tenemos células que lo van a hacer. Euh, Jean-Pierre, tu avais demandé la parole. Bonjour, monsieur le représentant. Euh, une précision par rapport à des propos que vous avez tenus hier sur le fait qu'on allait octroyer à l'Ukraine des avions ou des avions de chasse. Euh, Est-ce qu est que vous pouvez nous donner quelques détails Quels pays vont donner ces avions Et par qui seront pilotés ces avions Est-ce que les pays qui les donneront à l'Ukraine s'engageront dès lors dans euh, le conflit Et donc il y aurait une présence européenne dans le conflit. On suppose que ce n'est pas ça. Donc euh, on est un petit peu troublé par vos, vos déclarations. Ce serait peut-être bien de les préciser. Merci. Ne se préoccupez. Con los 500 millones de euros de la que hemos movilizado, aunque quisiéramos, no podríamos movilizar muchos cazas. Que no se sabe usted cuál es el precio de un caza. ¿no? De manera que no estamos hablando de lo que decidimos con nuestros fondos, pero que ciertamente pueden, algunos países europeos pueden, si quieren, bilateralmente movilizar toda clase de ayuda, porque ciertamente Ucrania para defenderse necesita también medios aéreos y eso forma parte de las peticiones de ayuda que nos ha dirigido, pero tendrán que ser... Aquellos países europeos que dispongan, si disponen, de cazas que puedan ser pilotados por los pilotos de la Fuerza Aérea Ucraniana, los que tengan que hacer 
que instrumentar esa ayuda. Merci beaucoup. Can I take another question? If it is easy, si es fácil, sí. Thomas, your question is easy or no? And fast. <laughs> Yes, it would be easy. I was going to, to ask about fighter jets, but it answered. So, um, hey, Rabbi, you, you've mentioned also uh, yesterday about the Poland uh, serving as a hub for this uh, military help, EU help for the Ukraine. And today, ministers uh, decided, as you said, on uh, creating the, the, the clearing house. Is it the same? How, how, how did it work? How many people and where geographically it would uh, work? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, una cámara de compensación es un instrumento financiero. No hace falta moverse de Bruselas para instrumentarla. Una clearing house es hacer un matching between ofertas y demandas. Eso se puede hacer perfectamente con un teléfono y una hoja de papel. Es decir, quién pide y quién da. Y no dar dos veces lo mismo, no dar cosas que no se necesitan y dejar peticiones sin atender. ¿Entiende? O sea, Ucrania está planteando peticiones... Hay 27 países que las están atendiendo. Se trata de hacer de manera que nos coordinemos a la hora de atender las peticiones de Ucrania y no dejar ninguna sin satisfacer, evitar duplicaciones y carencias. Pero eso se hace aquí, con un ordenador desde, desde Bruselas. Otra cosa, naturalmente, es transportar todo el material. Porque, claro, está muy bien decir, aquí hay dinero, sí, pero con dinero no se combate, se combate con armas y las armas tienen que estar allí donde se combate y, por lo tanto, hay que transportarlas. Y eso requiere una logística física, no, no de paper, una logística física muy poderosa y muy importante que tendrán que organizar los Estados miembros a través, ciertamente, de aquellos Estados que son fronterizos con Ucrania. Pero permítame que después de lo que he oído que decían algunos responsables militares rusos, no les dé más detalles. Y ahora sí que... Okay, so... no, a ver, la última pregunta. Seamos amables <risa> con la prensa que hace su trabajo. Muchas gracias. Eh, Lorenzo González, Oscar News. Uh, hi, representative. I, I will appreciate you answering Spanish because your Spanish is beautiful. Uh, I, <laughs> but I ask it in English because my Spanish is not as beautiful. Uh, we are now in, in, uh, in an, an escalation, a clear escalation uh, with this uh, military answer uh, from, from the EU, the first time it happens, uh, military support for, for the Ukra Ukrainian. My question is, How can we keep energy out of this? It's clear that for the Russians now, energy could become a way, I mean, cutting energy, a way to, uh, to, to, to damage the EU because we have uh, 40% of, of our energy coming from Russia. So how can energy remain outside all this? Thanks. Well, the energy will not be out of this conflict, like it or not. We have a dependency on Russian oil and gas. We are going to decrease this dependency as quick as possible. And this is an existential policy to decrease the dependency, which has been increasing, by the way, in the last years. For years, we have been talking about decreasing, decreasing, and we have been increasing, increasing. Well, that's time to decrease, seriously. It means renewables and hydrogen. Very much. But there's going to be turbulences on the markets of energy. It's easy to understand. It will happen. It's, it's happening. And it will increase prices. And prices will be paid by consumers. Maybe we can introduce uh, subsidies, uh, policies to, project, uh, to protect the most uh, vulnerable. But uh, we are in a situation in which, and that's what I was saying at the beginning, our actions and reactions against Russia will have economic consequences. And we have to be prepared for that. Don't believe that we can do whatever we need to do without having consequences. Look the consequences 
that the Ukrainian people are paying. They are paying a lot of consequences. <laughs> they are resisting, and thank God Zelensky is, no kind, is not the, the kind of the leader that escapes hidden in the car. No, he will stay there resisting. And we have to support him. And it's going to have a cost. And if we don't pay this cost today, we'll pay much more tomorrow. That's clear? Thank well, you. On this note, I would like to thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thanks to, in the, to the interpreter. And I'm sorry for all those who I couldn't take questions from.